Now let's take a look at the math involved when a charge is moving through a uniform magnetic field as we saw in the previous video. Here we see the same situation. I've got a charge down at the bottom moving with a velocity v entering a uniform magnetic field and according to the right hand rule it will follow the semicircular blue path that I've outlined on the screen. Let's look at the charge at a specific location. We'll freeze frame the action at one spot in time. Let's imagine the charge is at the top of the path here. I'll put a little plus to represent a positive charge. The charge will be moving to the left with a velocity v as shown. The velocity will be at a tangent to the blue semicircular path at this point. This is our velocity here. Let's label the forces in blue. Acting straight downwards is the magnetic force, which we will label Fb, as shown. The reason why the net force is down is simply due to the right-hand rule. Our thumb will point to the left, our fingers into the page to follow the magnetic field, and the palm of our hand will be facing downwards as shown by the blue arrow. Since this is the only force acting on it, this will therefore be the net force. So our net force is towards the center of the circle as it is with all circular motion. What does the equation look like? The equation is very simple, it turns out. All we need is to write our F net equation like we normally would. F net is the sum of the forces. Since the only force that's acting on it is the magnetic force, we say that F net is FB. And as usual, F net is MA. However, because our acceleration is centripetal, we're going to write this as MAC. Subbing in for AC, we get M v squared over r is equal to our magnetic force which we now know as the formula qvb. q is the charge of the object moving through the magnetic field, v is the velocity, and b is the external magnetic field. As you can see there's a velocity on either side so one of the velocities cancels and you end up with an equation that says mv over r is equal to qb. I can rearrange this equation and solve for r. And if I do this, I simply get r is mv divided by qb. And if you recall what we said when we watched the simulation, as the velocity increases, the radius of the circle increased. And we're seeing a direct relation right from this equation here. As the external magnetic field increased, the radius of the circle decreased. And you can see from this formula we get an inverse relationship. So it's a fairly simple equation. Um, as you can imagine, you can solve for mass of the charge, the charge itself, Q, or quite typically the ratio m over q, just by rearranging this formula.